everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to this month's Comfort Book Club discussion of Father by Elizabeth von Arnhem, which was August Choice. My mum Donna is here. Hello everyone. As always, we're going to be chatting about the book together. I absolutely loved it. I must say it was great. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. And thank you to everyone who sent in some fantastic voice messages for this month's discussion. I'm really looking forward to including all of those during our chat today. Of course, we've I got a bowl of apricots. We thought, what could be more appropriate for our afternoon treat? Absolutely, and they're at their best this time of year, I think. They really are, yeah. yeah. August is the month for them. So we're going to enjoy these later, as we've got a lot to get on with discussing yes, today. Yes, we do, we do. <laughs> I think Father was such a... Interesting book, Elizabeth von Arnhem is so well known for The Enchanted April, which was of course our April comfort book yes. club choice. Yes. And it was really great to turn to one of her lesser known books this and quite, month. quite, quite different from Elizabeth in the German Garden and The Enchanted April, I thought too. I think you could tell that she was doing something very different. She was quite innovative, wasn't she? I know you've read a lot of her. Yes. And she really did different things in every book. She didn't repeat her herself no I mean she explored very similar themes yes in all of her books but she managed to do them in very yeah. different ways yeah. and yeah I absolutely loved father there was so much humor in father there was which I thought was fantastic yeah. lot, lots of laugh out loud moments but I was so pleased that some of the people who sent a voice message said that they enjoyed father just as much if not more than the yeah. enchanted April yeah and one of those people was Naomi from the UK so let's listen to Naomi's message hello Miranda Donna and all members of the comfort book club this is Naomi from Shropshire, England. Thank you so much for discussing this refreshing, funny novel from the wonderful Elizabeth von Arnim. I love this book as much as, if not a little more than, The Enchanted April. Again, Elizabeth von Arnim's descriptions of freedom and nature are outstanding, but there is much more humour and farce in this novel, making it a charming, uplifting and enchanting book which also highlights the dependent position and limited opportunities available to women in 1930s England. The characters are wonderful, some wonderfully awful, and the love story between James and Jennifer, beautiful. An outstanding read. Oh, thank you, Naomi. Thank you, Naomi. <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoyed the book so much. Yeah. And I love that description of some of the characters being wonderfully awful. Yes, they really are. They really are. Yeah. 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 Um, but yes, I thought it was such a fun read too. And what I love about Elizabeth von Arnhem's books are that although there's a lot of lightness and humour, yeah. especially to one like Father. It's also a very meaty book. It is. This is it something is. we were talking it about. It is. I felt there was a lot to get your teeth into with this book. And there was a lot going on. You know, you had with Enchanted April a real feeling that it was a fairy tale. And it had mm -hmm. everything. They waved a magic wand. The place yes. did the magic. Yes. And it sort of all came right. This was a much more, in, in a way, um, hard-fought um, yes. sort of joy yes. at the end yes. and everything so yeah. I found that very interesting yes me too and yeah I think there was so much um, to discuss in it as well about women's freedom absolutely um, and so many of the themes that are familiar to Von Arnhem readers yeah. she yeah. writes so much about women being trapped as wives and yeah. daughters within yes. the home. Yes. And I thought that was so well done in Father. Yes. But Naomi was right too, there's a lot of sort of farce and humour. Absolutely. In the book. And some scenes really had me laughing oh, so me much. Too. You know, me with too. the grave digger and his awful song. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> really hilarious yeah uh, just so many moments that had yeah. me laughing out loud and another comfort book club reader called in um with her message saying that she also found a lot of very humorous moments in the book and one of her favorite 
one of her favourite moments is a favourite of mine as well. Right. So let's listen to Emma from the UK, her message about father. Hello, Miranda and Donna. I'm Emma from the UK. Father was my second Elizabeth von Arnhem read after The Enchanted April, and I loved it just as much. She has such an easy, personable style of writing that makes her books feel so warm and comforting, but she's also able to balance humour with emotion so effortlessly, and that's what made Father such a satisfying read, I think. I would find myself moved to frustration and pity, and then laughing out loud, often within the space of one page. I loved the character of Devonish, or Devilish, as Jennifer calls him, and especially the scene in which he winds up begging a bed at the pub, where Mr Patterson sympathises that he could not possibly sleep with Miss Ollier either. Although the humour is so clever and consistent the whole way through, I never felt like the book compromised on some of its more emotive issues, and the characters managed to stay well-formed and complex. Alice, for instance, isn't just a one-dimensional antagonist, but is actually a character I warm to so much, despite her faults, because Elizabeth von Arnhem somehow manages to make her human. All in all, I so enjoyed Father for the smiles it gave me, as well as the way it so realistically dealt with interdependence and freedom. Reading this book was like getting a big cuddle, and I'm so looking forward to reading more of her novels. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, so thank glad. you, Emma. I'm yeah. so glad you enjoyed it, Emma, and that it was like having a big cuddle. That's, that's rather so nice, wonderful. isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. And um, yes, I thought Alice was a very interesting character. I think very interesting. If you contrast Alice with Father, mm-hmm. you realise they're both in many ways bullies. Yeah. But I think where Alice is much more for is we see that she's someone who is older than her brother, so it's a, a sister-brother relationship, but she's going to basically have no financial freedom. She's mm-hmm. going to rely on her brother. That was the position of women, unless yeah. she could get married. And yeah. she was obviously of the bony type, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which I think is just, you know, like she just never met the right person until... No, well, yes, exactly. Yeah. But... Um, She was definitely one of the, you know, what they called the surplus women of the interwar years. Yes, very much. Who had far fewer opportunities to marry. And it's actually very clearly stated in the book that the money is really James's. Yes, very clearly. And that was a worry to her. Yeah. But you're right, I mean, she is a bully. Yes, but I do think that by the end of the novel, you do have more sympathy for Alice Definitely. than at the start. Definitely. And although her ending certainly wouldn't be my choice of ending at all, you do feel that there's hopefully going to be some happiness for I her. I think I, one felt like Jack had met his Jill there and you yes. felt it would be really almost a sexless marriage. I think yeah, that was... Yeah, definitely a marriage of companionship more yes. than anything. Yes. And, I mean, you are a bit uncertain about how happy she'll be as she really seems to be given more of a role as housekeeper but she is actually the most amazing housekeeper yes. I mean that's something she and Jennifer have in common is they're both really very good um housekeepers but Jennifer loathed being it and yes. Alice um, revels, relishes yes. it yes. yes and feels very underappreciated yes. by her brother yes which is interesting he really doesn't appreciate that no. about her it's probably a good thing as he'll have Jennifer you can <laughs> tell we'll just get a very good cook and things yes you know? yes exactly <laughs> um so yes I think you do have a lot more pity for Alice by the end yeah. But I would be interested to hear your opinions as well. If you read Father, what did you think of Alice? Did your opinion of her change at all during the book? Did you find her sympathetic? And by the end, she's actually feeling very sympathetic to Jennifer and James. Once love has entered her her life, then she can give it out, which I thought was really good. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Through experiencing love, she becomes much more loving and generous spirited. Yes. herself yes absolutely um, which was a very positive transformation yeah that occurred in the book there are lots of character transformations that occur mm. which we'll go into a bit more later mm. but hers was certainly a very positive one it was in the end yeah. i felt But another uh, reader who left a voice message for us spoke about how many of the themes of the novel such as women's freedom but also 
um, bullying characters and things mm-hmm. like that. Many of these are themes that are still very relevant yes. today. Yes. And so I thought we'd listen to Gina from the USA's message about this. Hello, Miranda and Donna. This is Gina calling in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the U.S. I do hope that both of you are feeling better. I just finished Father, and I am struck by how funny it was and how it continues to be relevant in present day. You know, the ideas of familial obligation and bullying, the weight and oppression of societal expectations, as well as mistaking the motivations of others and then blaming others for one's own reaction. All of these are sort of alive and well in the world today. I also love how Von Arnhem played with gender stereotypes between James and Jennifer. We see that he finds somebody uh, with whom he is simpatico and he sort of awakens and blossoms and is feeling so much more besotted so quickly, where she is awakening and blossoming to her independence and thinking of him later. So I thought that was very interesting and very funny as well. And I could very much feel from Von Arnhem's writing, Jennifer's and James' swells of happiness and hope, as well as like the crashes of disappointment that they felt. And then in the moments when they decided they were going to stand up to their bullies and then they couldn't, I really enjoyed this book very much. And I thank you for suggesting it. It was very enjoyable, very funny, and interestingly, very timely, given that it was written quite some time ago. Have a great day. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Gina. Yes, thank you, Gina. That's great. And we are feeling much better. Yes, thank we are. you. Thank you. <laughs> Fully recovered from COVID by now. Uh, thank goodness. But yes, I so enjoyed all of your comments. Yeah. That they were excellent. Yeah. And I think exactly so many of these themes are still relevant today um societal expectations towards single women i know (laughs) um in some ways still haven't changed as much as you would hope that they would um and i think you're right she really does sort of play with gender roles a little bit in this novel even in terms of the cottages yes. that Jennifer uh, goes to, the advertisements she replies to, the cottage she ends up with, James's cottage, he had, he had at first really wanted a man. Absolutely. Um, for the cottage yeah. and one that could dig graves. Yes. You know, it was yes. the sort of yes. grave digger's yes. cottage. And it's so interesting how Jennifer, in fact, you know, takes up a spade and digs in that cottage yeah. but she... she's not digging graves she's gr- digging for life exactly it's the garden it's life it's, exactly yes. but she still sort of in some ways takes on the role yeah, of a does. man yeah um in terms of she really sweats with that spade yes. as she well gets muscular she, one feels yeah brown you know, she and, yes, yeah, yes. works hard she yeah. becomes a lot less neat <laughs> yes, yes. and she you know sweats in the sun and she lets go a lot of those gender stereotypes yeah but even in the first cottage that she visits it's so yes. disastrous yes. um but you had an interesting point about that because uh, for that cottage she was expected to also take on the role of playing the organ yes I thought it was hilarious the way she just assumes oh I think I could do that can't be much different from a piano well I know that Von Arnhem actually trained herself um, to be an organist Mm -hmm. and of course it's hugely difficult and in those days, even it was becoming more acceptable for a lady organist. But mm-hmm. um, definitely when she was learning, I'm sure there was far more prejudice. It was still thought of as a man's instrument, the organ. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was really interesting that she thinks, oh, no, I can do that. And you realize with, to me, for Jennifer, mm-hmm. she was really emotionally um, abused mm-hmm. by her father Mm -hmm. but she she sort of had a good awareness of oh but I am competent I could do this I've been given my freedom I'm going for it she she was a brave person yes she was I mean it was quite quite remarkable in a way and how 
how starved she was of love and affection yeah. for all her life, really. I mean, yeah. you hope perhaps her mother gave it to her when she was younger, though the yes. mother seems to have devoted a lot of her life to father <laughs> <laughs> as well. You felt like um, he's like this sort of drain who sucks, yes, you know, yes, really sound Yes, people. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but despite all of that and despite having a very unloving parent, yeah. um, she has an amazing sense of self yes and a lot of confidence in herself which yeah. you really just see blossom yes. fully it's really enchanting in that bit i love yeah. that i yeah. love that too yeah um jason from new zealand also sent in a voice message talking a bit about um how relevant some of the themes of the book are still today which i also thought was Excellent, so let's listen to Jason's message. Hello, this is Jason from New Zealand. Elizabeth von Arnhem's novel Father tells the story of Jennifer Dodge, who on one fateful August morning decides to escape the tyranny of being expected to live with her dominating father in that black bottle of a house that is Gower Street. There are moments of humour with joyful descriptions of the countryside, but there are also moments of real drama and tension. I was worried for Jennifer when Netta, the younger woman married to Jennifer's father, showed up unexpectedly at Jennifer's new rental cottage. The anxiety in Jennifer's persuasion of Netta to return quickly to Gower Street and the subtle desperation in Netta's plea to be allowed a glimpse of comfort by staying just one night at Rose Cottage were so palpable. My heart broke into pieces knowing that each of them knew that liberty for one of them heralds the loss of independence for the other. Even with a hopeful and satisfying ending, Von Arnhem's ultimate message is to give voice to a dilemma that many individuals face when living in unhappy homes, when they must either bolt or go permanently under. She hits the nail on the head with these words, the lies the outside of houses told. She hated to think of people inside knuckling under, but who knew better than she the readiness to placate, forced on one by living with someone who is disagreeable. So like how Jennifer reaches for her garden spade as a symbol of freedom, this book is, for me, a talisman offering comfort, refuge, and camaraderie in showing that it is possible to find a room, a life of one's own, to find shares of enthusiasm like the Comfort Book Club to be found at last. Miranda and Donna, thank you both for recommending this great work of literature. Oh, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. As always, for your super thoughts. Yeah. Yes, I think what I loved is that Netta, in the end, does get freedom she in does. the book too. Yes. Um, which is quite a contrast from some of Von Arnhem's novels, like Vera, for instance, yeah. um, where you feel the heroine, to use Jason's words, is really going to just go under and yes. succumb to a really tyrannical husband. I really enjoyed that in this later book of hers, Von Arnhem shows this poor young <laughs> girl yes. who just decides, actually, I want none of this yes. and just gets away. Yes, she does. And I found it really interesting because I think Jennifer fails in her imagination of realizing just what a horrible situation this would be for Netta as a yeah. young woman, really just out of the, you know school, one almost yes. gets the feeling. Yeah. And it's really, again, you feel like almost like quite different because it's not a family relationship it's not mm. familial yeah. it's it, she's actually his wife and you have this yeah. horrible feeling of the physical abuse her physical revulsion yeah. the way yeah. he like tries to you know at, even at breakfast <laughs> she said yeah. and you know how horrific mm. it is and of course for for Jennifer who doesn't lack imagination but she doesn't want to picture this and it's not no. in her own experience she yeah. she she's able to send her away I think just because not because she's an unkind person but yeah. because she doesn't really understand completely yeah quite what the revulsion is for Netta yes um but Von Arnhem lets 
us know. She gives us enough hints that yeah. we know. And of course, she herself had a miserable marriage. Yes, yeah. um, she escaped a truly miserable second marriage, yeah. uh, which really informs a lot of her yeah. writing, I think. So she certainly knew what unhappy homes were like yes. and what could go on behind the scenes as well. I enjoyed Jason's reference to Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's yes. Own as yes. well and how that can um, be a token of freedom of some sort for women. I would also say that Von Arnhem gives her heroines a garden of yes, their own, yes. even more than a room. Yes, I, I agree. I think that Von Arnhem herself didn't enjoy domestic life no. very much. She loved being on her own. Yeah. She loved having her dogs and she loved having freedom and indeed a room of her own to write yeah. her books in. But she also loved to escape her home. And so much of her yeah. writing is about women Journeys. escaping. Yeah, travel. And yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they are restless heroines. They yeah. don't stay at home. They don't stay in one place. They go off to new places. They travel, like Enchanted April. Yes. This, all of this transformation yeah. occurs I when agree. the women go abroad. Yeah. They go to Italy. Yeah. Jennifer's, or to the countryside. Or to the countryside. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer's transformation comes when she moves to the countryside and it's there that she finds freedom and she especially finds freedom in her garden. Yes. From yes. picking up that spade and digging and transforming her own outdoor space in that way. And, and Von Arnhem, she, she kept buying houses or, or she built houses but where her true interest lied or obviously was in building the garden you know in yes. getting the, the beautiful garden space and yeah. outside space for herself too. yeah and yeah. transformation also comes for James and for Alice and their yes. relationship when they too travel yes absolutely. and they go abroad to Switzerland mm -hmm. and it's there that James has this real revelation about yeah. Alice's true nature yeah and about his own true nature and what he actually wants uh, the scene out of on the life. train is one of the most comedic to me and I absolutely loved it you know the poor French people <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's English. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and the shouting. I, know, I mean, it's a, a horrible scene in some ways, but yeah. there's also a lot of humour. I mean, I think she's amazing at how she can incorporate moments of tragedy, even despair, yeah. with real elements of comedy. Yes, and that scene in Switzerland where they both try to slip away from each yes, other and then yes. sit, then end up sitting down right next That's to each so other. Funny. I mean, that reminded me of P.G. Woodhouse, yes. that kind of like yes. situation that occurs yes. and co yes. type of coincidence for yeah. comic effect. Yeah. That had a real Woodhousian touch it did. Um, to me. And another reader who left a voice message said that father, elements of father, the novel, obviously, reminded her of P.G. Woodhouse too. Uh, so let me play Penny's message, Penny from the USA. Hi, Miranda, Donna, and members of the Comfort Book Club. This is Penny in the US. I love this book so much. The author delves into the inner thoughts of the characters and gives such depth to the story. Jennifer's optimism is inspiring and the suspense and timing are just perfect. The wit and humorous scenes reminded me of P.G. Woodhouse. Alice describes James as an obvious goose and he describes himself as a dragonfly while looking in the mirror. The romance between Jennifer and James is so sweet. It's funny how Alice perceives his love-struck appearance as an illness and fetches the thermometer. Thank you for introducing me to this wonderful novel. Oh, thank you, Penny. Yes, thank <laughs> so you, glad Penny. you enjoyed it. Yeah. And yeah, there are lots of misunderstandings yes. between characters in this book. Um, one thing that's so nice about Jennifer and James is that they have this mutual understanding. They really do. Instantly. instantly. They really get each other. They do. And so many of the, many of the characters just don't get each other no, at all. Like no, Jennifer and her father never understood no, each other. No, and even father and the, uh, the maid, you know, when mm. she says, oh, Jennifer's engaged, <laughs> he takes it to be like, oh, she's off doing something yes. instead of looking after yeah. me sort of thing. When yeah. in fact, she really is getting engaged. And Mr. Devonish too, he yes. doesn't understand Jennifer 
Yennefer at all. Um, <laughs> and, not at uh, all. You know, there's that very sort of funny scene when she's throwing like the sardine tins <laughs> over the wall. But wasn't that interesting? I'd never mm. thought of what, how they would have disposed in the country, especially a hamlet as she was living in, of things that weren't, you know, biodegradable, like sardine tins. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I think people would have normally just dug a hole and sort of buried that type of thing. With that, I wonder if they wouldn't have had somebody in that by that time coming around to collect, but they would have saved well, maybe. it up, yes. maybe. Yes. But anything else, would have they would have dug holes. I'm sure you're yeah. right. Yes. I thought that showed how little experience she had in terms of that sort of domestic yes very much um, you know you role know, that she had still maid. relied yeah. on maid servants yeah. and cooks yeah. um, from her background and she didn't actually know <laughs> what no. to do no really, i agree uh, which spoke to her inexperience yes um yes. but i also wanted to talk a bit about the actual title of the book father that's what i was going to ask you what you yeah because i think that's obviously very significant the book isn't called jennifer no it's called father and i think that speaks to these recurrent themes of how women were so often trapped by fathers as as, yes. as well as husbands yes. of their real sort of duties in the home whether as a wife or a daughter yeah. could so often curtail their freedom and it's really um well it really addresses what it's like to live in a patriarchal society as it well. does it does very 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 well mm-hmm. and um yeah and i think it's interesting that both jennifer and alice are older than yes. um, the sort of typical heroine light netted. They're not young yes. girls out of the schoolroom, no. basically. Mm-hmm. They're older, but they've really, both of them still have this um, really restricted life completely because yeah. of the male dominance or, or lack of money or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the lack of money is an interesting one. Alice yeah. is very aware yeah. of her lack of money and how that makes her vulnerable. Yeah. Jennifer is very over overly, I think, yes, optimistic I about her hundred pounds a year. Yeah, because it's not what did Virginia Woolf say she needed? Five hundred a year, right? I think, I think so. I think something like yeah, that. I it think was a, much a lot higher. more than a hundred. Yeah, yeah. And James is nervous for her when he first yeah. hears about the hundred pounds a year. Um, Jennifer, again, you feel it's really down to her inexperience. She doesn't realise how hard that will be yes. to live on. And I think it was very clever of Von Arnhem to include this because, in fact, what the reader will start to fear for Jennifer is how is she going to survive yeah. on that hundred pounds a year especially as she gets older and going into and what we think would be the 30s we know that you know yeah exactly. stocks and shares are gonna sink how yeah. much will that how really much keep money will she have her? at all so yeah. in fact how much freedom does she have and how hard is it for women um to be financially independent uh, to the extent that they do not have to rely on a man. And you don't see Jennifer have to face that because the novel concludes and she, in fact, finds her happiness yes. with James before she really has to address that question. Absolutely. But she does start to worry a little she bit. She does. She she can see herself because, after all, she's not actually cooking anything. It's summer. She can manage on cans of sardines and a few yeah. bits of yeah. vegetables and apricots and things. But you wonder, like, when it gets cold, how will that really be yes. in that And as the cottage? years goes by, go Um, by um how would she keep surviving and managing um now i think the ending of the book um is really interesting and uh christina from spain sent in a message about the ending and jennifer's ending so i thought we'd listen to her message before discussing it together so i'll play christina's message Good afternoon, Miranda, Donna, and all the members of the Comfort Book Club. When I finished the reading of Father, I realized I had mixed feelings about the development of events in the story. On one hand, the plot is superb and the ending can't be more perfect. But on the other hand, 
couldn't Jennifer have been perfectly happy on her own? All her dreams had been fulfilled and the sense of happiness and real freedom she had achieved in that tiny cottage would have been a perfect plot, a perfect model for other women, a perfect ending to. Anyway, when everything looked that perfect, the very man to sit under a tree with in the dark arose, and even though the novel is marvelous. I would like to tell you many things about the novel, but I will finish my message just standing out Jennifer's wonderful personality, kind-hearted, positive, hardworking, persevering, with impeccable personal values, and always carrying on, in spite of the fact that absolutely nobody in the novel is kind or affectionate towards her, not even James at first. Thank you very much and a big thank you for this amazing recommendation. Thank you, uh, Christina. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. Yes, I think that is um, an interesting point. You know, why didn't Von Arnhem just let Jennifer be single? And I think it comes back to what we were saying. It was very, very hard for women yeah. to be financially independent. And we're given and the single. hint too that Jennifer really wants a child. Yes. Remember the, the yeah. scene with the little girl? Yes, who's um, bringing the milk. Yeah. And Jennifer yeah. uh, has a sort of a pang. And even some of her emotions initially towards James are described yeah. as being quite motherly. motherly. I think she's a very motherly person. And in has, those has days, strong I mean, mother instincts. She would have had to have married him to, you know, keep yeah, going to have, to, yeah, yes, realistically to have, been able yeah. to sort of have um, a child, child. In, yeah. in those days. Yeah. And I think that was important to her. So I think she has a very happy ending with James I think that it's one of the best relationships you see in yes um the Von Arnhem with that. books that I've read so far I yeah. think they are well suited um but is there a bit of an amb ambiguity to the ending I think it's interesting the book has to end when father ends yes absolutely um, going back to yeah. the title it's yes. called father and the book ends and when, when he, he ends yes exactly. but also his death is caused by his own temper. Yes. Finding such a out about temper tantrum, really. Yeah, a temper tantrum. Yes, finding out yes. about Jennifer's engagement. And it is his death that enables Jennifer's future with James. The ambiguity mm. comes from Jennifer has essentially gone from being the property of one man to being the property of another. That's right. Um which is interesting and yeah. I think Von Arnhem is making that point in this book but sadly Jennifer's fantasy at that cottage would would have been very difficult yes to live I, out. I mean I think Von Arnhem sees reality mm -hmm. and she gives her the happiest possible ending because yes. he's it's true love between them there yes. you know you feel this is going to be a very happy you do you do um, feel match. it's going to be a very happy match yeah. which gives it an optimistic and didn't end you feel well. that the end you're almost seeing him in his grave the way he sort of crawls back father of course mm. crawls back to the bed and he's penned in and he doesn't even have a pillow he's mm. on the very edge yeah. of the bed and yeah. you know I think it and really again it's is. his bad temper and his yes. refusal to budge from his you know prejudicial yeah. outlook essentially yes. Yes. his like, he, like rigid principles of what should be done and how yes. it should be done and the maid is not allowed um, to come upstairs exactly you know yeah. And, yeah. It's, and, and that's what causes his own demise yes um which i think is quite fitting <laughs> yes yes, yes. <laughs> um but yes i think that jennifer does get the happiest ending that vanana could sort of give her yes um in those days and it's interesting because though Van Arnhem was a feminist in many ways yeah. I think yeah she was still a feminist in terms of her time yes of course um, we have to appreciate we have that. to appreciate that yeah. as well yeah and also you know acknowledge how things fortunately have changed for women we do have a lot more choices but still a lot of yeah. this speaks to us today it does well. it does even for Alice she couldn't have managed happily alone she mm. she still has now 
yeah. um, with the respectability of being a wife and that really helps her yeah um yeah and I think even as we see that Jennifer is actually a wonderful secretary but she wouldn't have been able to earn enough or hold that position she mm. didn't like it enough to want to do that for a different man no you no. know yes you know exactly. I think that that is it's it's really a very happy ending to me and of course yeah. there's the humor of you know yes. the maid always saying oh you know I knew, she she never actually told anyone but she always blamed herself well of <laughs> yes. course it's no fault of hers no. at all yeah. it's all the fault of yeah, father, father. <laughs> yes. yeah yeah but yes uh, a book that provides so much for discussion I so enjoyed yeah. our chat today and I hope you did too and thank you again to everyone who left a voice message um, yeah, but yes please you. do let us know your thoughts on the book um, for those who read along with us and Next month, of course, we will be discussing The Lark by E. Nesbitt, which I'm really looking forward to. And then October's choice, which I haven't announced yet, but will do now, is Persuasion by Jane Austen. The most wonderful autumnal oh, It feel. is, it yeah. is. And yeah. October's my birthday month, and I think this is probably my yeah. all-time favourite novel. It is, I so know. I thought a treat for me in October. <laughs> you deserve it, darling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is to, to Discuss persuasion. I'm so excited about yeah. this. Um, yeah. So um, I hope you'll all join in and read along with us too. But thank you so much to everyone for watching this video. Extra big thanks as always to those of you who have pressed the super thanks button on my videos lately. You're so appreciated yes, and help me you. to keep this channel going. Um, but thank you to everyone who watches my videos and supports with your comments and likes. They mean so much as well. But have a wonderful rest of the week and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.